I'm in a store and I'm singing. I'm in a store and I'm singing. Hey! There's no singing in the North Pole. Yes, there is. No, it's not. It's the 15th anniversary of Elf, and we're looking back at the modern Christmas classic. So grab a cup of the world's best coffee and huddle around. Here are seven things you didn't know about Elf. Probably. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. Buddy's Life in the North Pole looks like it could have been a classic Christmas cartoon on its own. So it's no surprise that growing up, director Jon Favreau loved the classic Rankin-Bass Christmas specials such as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Jack Frost. What you may not know is Favreau also voiced most of the creatures except for two. The polar bear cub, voiced by legendary stop-motion animator Ray Harryhausen. Oh boy. And Leon the Snowman, voiced by famed jazz musician Leon Redbone. You're six foot three and had a beard since you were 15. Leon also recorded a duet of Baby It's Cold Outside with Zoe Deschanel for the soundtrack, which is boom, a bonus Redbone thing. Although the North Pole scenes seem to come straight out of a classic Christmas cartoon, many of the real world settings came out of a horror movie. And no, not the one called Real Life, the one called Freddy vs. Jason. Several interior locations, such as Santa Land, the doctor's office, the mail room, and even the Hobbs apartment, were built in vacant buildings of the Riverview Hospital complex in Vancouver. According to Favreau, filming took place right after the hospital played host to the two horror movie icons, both of whom we all know are for sure on the naughty list. <laughs> Sure, this holiday comedy is filled with famous faces, such as Ed Asner, Bob Newhart, and James Caan. But probably the best get of the film is Peter Billingsley, aka Ralphie from A Christmas Story. Billingsley is a producing partner of Favreau's and makes his return to Christmas movies as the head elf that reassigns Buddy to the quality assurance department. Bonus fact, the last jack-in-the-box in this scene was controlled by a remote, so Will Ferrell's reaction was 100% real and terrified every single time. If Will Ferrell seemed at home in the tights and Christmas spirit, it's because he has had experience as an actual mall Santa. When he was part of the Groundlings in Los Angeles, Ferrell played Santa at an outdoor mall in Pasadena for a few weeks. Fellow Groundling and future SNL co-star Chris Kattan was one of Will's elves as well, which seems more of a wholesome pairing than the Butabi brothers. After a long day of convincing children that Santa is real, it is nice that they could always go out for a night at the Roxbury. Although a diet of candy, candy canes, candy corn, and syrup is ideal for elves, it probably isn't the healthiest thing for a human adult. Will Ferrell got so sick consuming all the sugar in some of his scenes that he couldn't sleep and develop headaches. He had to shoot the candy breakfast scene at least four or five times, each time consuming enough sugar to put down a room full of toddlers for a nap. Even the cotton balls in the doctor's examination room are made out of cotton candy. But hey, where else are you going to get the energy to decorate a whole store for Santa's big arrival? Santa's coming in town! Santa! In addition to the candy spaghetti and cotton candy cotton balls, Buddy also drinks an entire liter of Coca-Cola, which is pretty impressive and disgusting. Thankfully, with a little bit of movie magic, Will Ferrell didn't actually have to do that. Practical effects helped out by connecting a tube to the bottle to drain it quickly. But the cool thing here is that the unbelievable burp that Buddy belches is real. Did you hear that? The man behind the burp is Maurice LaMarche, the voice of Brain in Pinky and the Brain and countless other cartoon characters you probably love. LaMarche's IMDb page even lists Stunt Burper as one of his trademarks, which is a boom, bonus bodily function thing. All the exterior shots of New York when Buddy first arrives were filmed guerrilla style, with Favreau and Farrell figuring out things Buddy could do or see. All the extras in the scenes were regular people that were just passing by that they asked to film. The scene where he eats gum off the subway entrance also elicited some groans from people passing by, but worry not, that gum was all pre-chewed by Farrell and placed on a thin sheet of plastic to keep it from being truly gross. Also, according to Farrell, they even convinced the New York Fire Department to let him ride on the back of a fire engine, but it was cut for time. Man, oh man, am I sorry that didn't make it into the film. That's all we have for this episode of Things You Didn't Know, but tell us your favorite way to spread Christmas cheer and subscribe to Cinefix for more truish things about movies and sometimes stunt burping right here on Things You Didn't Know.